I'm going to start here because it's more basic than the, the access and functionality of the paid one, right? And, and we're not going to stay too long on this one because, uh, you know, obviously we're going to need to, the goal is to have the better access, the more functionality and stuff like that, right? So. I know everybody pretty much knows all this stuff, but I'm going to go through it just for conversational purposes and uh, to introduce uh, on, on video what we're doing. Uh, today we're talking about, uh, this is a workshop for WordPress. So we're, we're talking about a pro account and we're talking about a free account. We're going to go through templates, how to select and create the feel that you want based on things that are offered online, things that you can buy, things that are free. All that stuff. So, WordPress used to have an option where you just hover up here somewhere and it gives you the option to go to admin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But now it's changed to my sites, and you can switch site. And I've got all these other ones here. Uh, all of these, by the way, are free. Every all of the stuff that I have, like little projects and stuff, like film festival profiles, is something where I interview the co-founders and curators and creators of festivals, film festivals around the world. And I did podcasts and stuff like that. It's really cool. I don't even know if it's still up and running, but it was, at the time it was going, it was pretty cool. Uh, I have an online business card. I think I talked to that, talked about that with some of you. You can, you can set up a WordPress, uh, a, a pro account and have a, an actual web address, a domain that you own and you can kind of clandestinely forward your traffic to it. And the, the benefit to that is that you'll pay something like 10 bucks a year just to hold the name, just to own the name. And it looks professional, like Tylenol.com or whatever, or you know, heritagefarms.com. But then <coughs> what it'll do is it'll forward it to a WordPress page that you don't pay for at any time in the year, and you're really just paying 10 bucks a year. So, and that is good for people who, it's kind of a catch-22 because this one, this option is good for people who kind of already own lots of sites and do lots of stuff because kind of like the, 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 uh, the unfortunate benefit is that you have to already know and handle a lot of traffic to know that this is the best way to go. So it's like a weird little way to do that. So when you're forwarding that um, custom domain, back to the free site, does it resolve to the WordPress.com URL or does it keep your custom It can do both. And I'll show you that. I'll, I'll pull up. So your, your host, mine happens to be iPage, your host should give you the option to to hold that and, and it also depends on how it's accessed. So if you access it from a link somewhere else, some someone at some point in time has stumbled upon your web address and said, "Oh, I, I really, I think I want to use this as a resource of mine." They link to you. It may or may not keep it from stealth mode in that way. Uh, but I'll show you how to get to that part. So this is the iPage control panel. This is what it'll look like if you purchase your own uh, host from them. There's there's several. I, I really I, I can't really speak to the efficacy of other servers or of other hosts actually, but I know that I've never had problems out of mine. They've always handled all my traffic without too much problem. I they have warned me of system viruses. They've warned me of like times that they're going to be doing system wide updates, and it's always been pretty convenient. can open on your work on your accounts and things like that so uh, it's great for somebody like me who's got a, a, a 85,000 image photo gallery that, that crosses 40 countries and 65 gal albums you know what I mean like I have a lot of content on, on, my, on my photography website. Have you ever had an issue with them automatically updating the WordPress core and breaking functionality? They don't. 
It's up to you to update. Oh, yeah, since. Oh, okay. Uh, so here, speaking of uh, Alicia's comment, we have the option to create WordPress. Now that's just a one type of template. You can create your own website. They, they've created their own software called Mojo or uh, what's the other one? Go, Go Mobi uh, and Weebly. So there's several different of their own. There's website creator CM4, CM4 or whatever. Uh, all that stuff. Then you can create your own from there, or you can go with WordPress and you, you click here and you follow the steps to, to download that. I'm assuming that GoDaddy has a very similar format for creating a WordPress based Is this a website. Is <coughs> a pretty standard layout? Because I buy a right now for a website I have. It looks almost identical. Does that work? Yeah. I, again, I, I don't think I've, I ever, when I was in my news days, you know, Doing FTP stuff, sending my sending my photos back to my uh, news team or my, my managing editor over an FTP. I would access their site, and but there's a couple of problems with my story. The first is that it's you know ten years ago, <laughs> and secondly, they just ran stuff differently now. But then and I don't even think Word, WordPress was available for for you know templates over hosting. I'm not sure when that particular. So, domain, I think you can go to domain central, you can just click on domain, and it will, okay, it will just make you choose one. So, I'm just going to go to domain central. All right, so these are all my websites here. Uh, one, so I've got, let's talk about this one. This is kind of what we're talking about here. Uh, Travelgeekmagazine.com is the official holder of all my content, but then I thought, you know, what if, you know, travelgeekmagazine.com is a very long and kind of cumbersome address, so what if somebody just wanted travelgeekmag.com or, or, or in, in, in talking, you know, on blogs and things like that, that's a little bit shorter, a little bit easier on the eyes. If you capitalize TGM within that, it's easier to break it up and kind of see that that's actually what the word is. So what I did was I reserved that, and what I've done from travelgeekmag.com is I've just created what's called a pointer. And perhaps it will open that link. I'm going to click on it. Perhaps not. Ready to go. <laughs> All right, so this says, as you can see, points to subdirectory. Now if I click the subdirectory, it'll say, server side, you can access the server in a different way, um, but that's kind of a different conversation. Looking at a server is much different than looking at what we've got here. It's in a way simpler and, and in a way more complicated. And you can see this one here points to URL. All right, so the URL is uh, the actual link that uh, on which the, the, the website rests. You know, that's where it lives. So you can tell this one points to a subdirectory, this one points to a URL. That's kind of what we're talking about as far as, as what stuff pointing to other stuff. Now, let's talk about my online business card. If I pull up kyle.me, it's my online business card. You know, for somebody like me, it's good to have one because I, I'm, I'm, I'm always traveling, or at least up until very recently, I was always traveling. Ooh, I forgot. It's got me with no hair up there. That's, Yes, yeah, and in fact, I, I have my resume here. So, uh, the, the films that I've done, the books that I've published, the podcasts, uh, all of these different places where my media rests, that's kind of like here. It also is, is good to validate, because if, um, you know, the more stuff you publish, somebody, people will take your stuff and put it on their stuff. But if you have something like this, everybody knows what's genuine, because it's all linked from one main place, right? So, Heritage Farms, if it goes global, you know, like there's a good reason, very, very good uh, purpose for, for having sort of a, an online resume. But if we go, if we actually look at this um, in this place, the address here. Okay. Now, the actual address that it points to, 
is this address. Okay, so you have it set to stealth. Yep. So it's masking as opposed to forwarding. Right. Now if I if I if I click this here, it says stealth, and then I click save, what it'll do no matter what I click on here, if I click uh, save resume, right? It still says, as you'll notice, this address. This never changes. It overrides the idea that I've got. I'm actually on this website hosted by WordPress. All right, so if I copy that, paste it here, and go here, it's the exact same website. But what, it, what it's a lot, what it, the benefit to, to doing that is that it's, it costs me 10 bucks a year, no more, no less, never changing, to just hold the name and forward that to another address, whereas $130 a year is what it costs me to host an actual domain and all, have all the functionality. So the, the price of that is exponentially larger. All right. So if I put standard on here, though, Say it, it will, when, when you type in Palo Alto, let me, I mean, hit enter, it'll just change automatically to, you know, the, without any kind of a prompting or whatever you'll see this address. All right, so that's that. Um, what else can I tell you about the, this side of things? Alicia, you probably, you guys probably have some questions over there about this side, right? Probably have a portfolio of my work on my on my resume. I haven't had the time, but you can't do that on, on things like LinkedIn. And Facebook is nice, but it's not quite as professional as it could be. You know, I don't know you get an account. I haven't really used it, but I thought my impression was it was mostly just like a resume, social resume builder. I guess so that's the first time I've seen that business card. It looks pretty clean and concise and a nice snapshot. Yeah, well, it cuts right to the chase, like you're saying. You know. If social media as, you know, as a tool is something you're really interested in and you want to cover all the bases, then I would recommend having the LinkedIn profile and the Facebook and, and, and the Twitter or whatever else. And you can, in every case, you can point those back to your personal website where your content is, whether that's your online business card or your business site. In the model that houses you, you could have your personal, your, your business and your farm. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. 
All right, so uh, that, is, that is one of the important differences. So um, Anish and uh, Chase and Ty, they're going to, as well as you guys, are going to be interested in the, the editing option that's not available on basic WordPress. All right, so I'll just briefly go through and, and talk about what that is. So on appearance, if you go to editor, this is the central hub. This is the language that, that drives all of the other stuff. And it's, it's this, this is what you've got. All of this stuff is, is known uh, colloquially as code. And it's the HTML that, that, that all of the internet reads to quickly decode your website and make it appear as it should, as you hope it to appear. It's all kinds of interesting little things. Now, when I first opened my, my first website, something like five years ago, six years ago, this was this list was about half as big as it is right now. And in, in another five years, it'll probably be twice as big as it is now. It's just constantly, constantly changing and growing and adapting uh, the, way, the way that people put websites together and, and all that stuff. Now, you don't have to be a super techie to do all this stuff. Once you have your website up and running and you want to do, say, advertising, you're going to have marketers that reach out to you or you reach out to them and they're going to say, okay, put this piece of code in your header section and in between the mm and the mm code. And, and I've actually done that.
quite literally nothing better to do with their time than to find out how to hack into old WordPress updates. So yearly, WordPress, because of these annoying uh, bad words that I'm not gonna say, uh, they kind of unofficially require you to do that. If you go more than three years and don't do an update, you're gonna be in trouble because code changes, formats change, uh, the way that WordPress is hosting, even though, even though it's downloaded and independent on your host, it still has to be read on the web and, and offer WordPress services. <coughs> and that's what WordPress and, and your host get, you know, I don't know how they work out being paid. I'm sure WordPress makes money out of it, but uh, that's because WordPress is so easy to use. So in any case, uh, they update, so you need to update as well to keep up with that. And that's a pain in the hiney. Uh, before we even get into that conversation, that's a giant pain in the ass because you have to take all of your content, back it up, update everything independently, and then reload that content. And things like widgets and uh, all of the all of the particulars that you've that you've created, all that stuff changes as well. Jeez, I can't type today. So this is a little travel blog that I started a few years ago, quite a while ago. Over on this side right here, all this, <coughs> this is it called a sidebar. This is a sidebar, and this is your main feed. All right. Any kind of blog that you do will have a generalized kind of look. So why not some? Go, it goes somewhere else, and you know, 
got an actual customized link to host my subscribers. I'll show you guys about that uh, individually if you want to know about that. Um, the next one down is going to be Twitter. So follow me. And there's a little Twitter button that you can get right on the Twitter website. Customize the look of that so you will actually go and talk to Twitter and say, okay, this is the little button that I want. And you will just take the code from that literally copy and paste it right here. I changed the, the wording of it, as I recall, so that my name actually pops out over, or I'm sorry, the, the, the name is separate from the number of followers. Maybe that's important, maybe it's not, I don't know. Let's put it in there. Let's see, the next one down would be, uh, I've got the YouTube page listed here. Now, I, I did not like, as I recall, the button that YouTube has. So I just put my own little link. YouTube has the little red triangle thing that says play on YouTube or go to YouTube or subscribe or whatever. They make their own custom ones. I didn't like those. And so what I did was I, I took right from the subscription center at IE the, the link that that little button that they have links to. And I just took that link. I found that in the code and I just made a link to it and entitled that link subscribe on YouTube. Now you'll notice that this bit of code here, there's, there's a start bracket and an end bracket, right? there's, and it starts with ahrep, and I believe that means hypertext reference, if I'm not mistaken, all right? And so that, so your open brackets and then the actual link starts from here, HTTP, and ends right here between these quote marks, that quote and that quote. That's your link itself, and when you have something that's called target blank, that means it opens up into a new page. That means it's, it's, it's going to leave this tab current, and then when I click on it, it'll open up another tab. Instead of going from that site, staying on the page, and moving right over. It's grown. All right, so I also added this little bit of text here that says, Send me your, send me whatever questions you have. I'll yeah, sure. I'll let's go again. So I also put and like below. And I don't know why I did this because probably very few people actually see that, but liking it, I don't know, whatever. I think I had a Facebook link here. I probably just need to go ahead and delete that. Let's do that now. So all you'd have to do is either click delete or you can take it. As you can see, these little drag options here. You can drag it all the way down to a, an unused bin, so you can take it to the inactive uh, section. All right, so you can drag it all the way down here, and it says inactive widgets. So I could drop it right in this section, and what that would do is it would allow me to keep all the code that I wrote without deleting it, but that would also take it off my website, so I wouldn't lose it. Who knows how, how long I searched it until I could find the actual link to subscribe on YouTube, right? All right, so I've got a few books on here for sale, and then that's inactive, I think I should I don't know, sometimes when you, you, you can actually put a widget up here just to space out other widgets too.
And that's, that's kind of like the back end of, uh, real quick overview, a topical dis discussion of the back end of creating a, a blog. All right? So, questions so far? I know everybody's like, kind of like doing this number. And so, uh, let's, let's take a break actually real quick. I have to use the bathroom. I've been sitting here kind of like tapping my feet for a while. Let's take a break. We'll come back. Uh, I'm going to talk about like the actual, the nuts and bolts of uh, creating the template that you want, finding it, finding what's most applicable to you and stuff like that. All right? All right. So, what did I say I was going to talk about? I've read an email since then. Themes, right? Okay, good. Okay, so where is my? There we go. So let's go to themes. Now, to get the right look that you want for your website, blog, magazine, online newspaper, photo gallery, uh, whatever. <coughs> This is where you're going to go. It's called Themes. The one that I've got for my blog, as you'll note, is Sunspot. That's, I don't know why that's the first one that popped up. Normally it isn't. Uh, apparently it's trending. <laughs> what, the, the first thing you need to do is figure out what you want and then think of the words that are or are related to that particular appearance. Okay, And that is how WordPress template designers name their templates. Well, okay. uh, there's one that comes out every year that's called, called 2015 or 2016 or whatever, and they spell it out. There are some that, uh, this is called Mirror, this is called Creative Portfolio. It's got the word portfolio and the word creative in it. Do you know what I mean? There's, the theme exists here. This is called Purpose, this is called Fordwalk, this is called Wilson, that probably would never link into what you're saying. But what they what they also have are tags. All right, and those tags are going to bring you up to um, those kinds of things. Up here, they've got a link for all, free, or premium. You're going to choose accordingly. It'll, it'll help you filter out all of the, every second or third one on this page is, it's got a price tag on it. You see, like, this one is 30 bucks. 80 bucks, 180 bucks, 70 bucks, right? The price, there's no, there's no pattern for how much they cost. The designers themselves sit around and this is what they do. They build WordPress templates for you. So however much time they put into that particular template, that's what they charge. That's it. That's the math. There's no real, uh, there's no other way to, to kind of calculate it. So needless to say, it's random. Let's just say that we want, for our purposes, free. All right. Now, this is going to limit in a couple of ways. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to limit you in quality, but most of the time, I guess it probably will. I mean, the functionality is still going to be there. You still have all of the same options on all of the different WordPress templates that you have here. All of them. But, what you can do with them on the visual end, on the appearance side, that's what you get more of when you pay for one. All right. So let's say you want one of the most popular ones, the newest ones, you'll go here. But somebody give me an idea for a blog. Pick a blog, any blog. Food, good, I'm sure there's tons of that. Alright, so more than likely, the first few that came up, I don't know why it has, it has free and paid ones, even though I have You lost your filter when you changed your tab, or when you searched. Yeah, possibly. So, in any case, uh, more than likely, the reason that these got pulled up is because the, the programmers put the word food in the tags that brought them up. Now, for some reason, we don't see those tags listed, but what we can do is preview, and we can preview in live. So it'll take a second, but what it'll do is take all of your current content and put it into like just a generalized frame of what the programmer thought your stuff would look like. And there you go. I've got a page of 
pages are up here, about and contact. The title of the blog is here. You know, uh, this is actually a private one. Private, by the way, you can, you can set your posts to private and you're the only one that can see them or people that you invite to see them. Uh, so here I've got, this is what my blog would look like if I had all of the stuff put this way. Now, what it doesn't do, obviously, is clip your posts. So if you want the whole post up there on every single one because you were doing, say, a recipe website and your recipe is like two stanzas long, right? I mean, how many stanzas could it take to make barbecue chicken? So if you want the full thing, you can select that, that you want that whole thing listed here. This is kind of what it looked like. I have kind of long posts and you know videos and stuff like that. So I don't want it. I don't want it like that. And it just, the code just kind of messed up on me right there, so don't worry about this. But, um, so in any case, what you can do is just kind of preview. That's the point of what I'm trying to do there. So you can you can if you have you see something you like, oh I like the, the fact that this one has you know this one has top bar where I can say, okay, this is, this is post number one or page number one, two, three, four, and five, and I can have pictures that say, instead of the recipe itself, you can have a picture of that final product, the food that you made can be a picture there, or, or a type or category of food, like pies, for instance, you can have pies and like clicking there would open up all of the posts that you have created that uh, have recipes for pies. Um, you know, Italian, I don't know, whatever, you understand, I'm sure how that works, right? So here, they've also given an, an option for latest, most discussed, and most popular. So it doesn't, it doesn't always have to break down in straight, linear fashion. Sometimes uh, this template, for instance, has an option to filter a little bit more intricately than just giving you all of the stuff first. And that's actually a good feature for something like food or something like news, right? The most popular or the most recently viewed or the most discussed, those are going to be very key for, for something that's very time-based, like a news blog or a magazine or you know things like that that aren't necessarily feature style but are, are time sensitive. All right? This is 2014. This is the actual one that I was referencing a minute ago when they spell out the year of the word. And every year, you can plan on this this web designer creating a new template and naming it that. And that's actually the one that I, that I picked for our class blog. And you'll notice the one that they have here is much more intricately designed than, than, than ours. I've picked this one because A, it's free, and B, it's easy. It's very plain. I don't need a lot of jumble on there to confuse the, the students who might not be who might be pretty novice users for class blogs and things like that. So I cut out all the crap and keep it nice and simple. A lot of these websites will be able to do the same thing. All right. Here's one that's actually um, kind of food related here. They named it Mocha. Now this style of blog here is really really popular. What it does is it takes just, not just, but mostly images of <coughs> your posts and, and the post itself, the picture itself is the link to the post, right? It's very, very easy on the eyes. This is just, just super simple. It takes very basic text, uh, font rather, and puts your text into that. Uh, all your pages are right here. I mean, everything's simple. It's cut and dry. The, the good part about this is that it's simple. The bad part is that for some reason the code is messing up on this but uh, I'll try to just leave it as it is and not scroll because it seems to mess up when I scroll. But in any case, the good, the good part about this is that it's really, really super easy to look at. Just like you got a picture, and then under the picture you've got a quick little description, and then under the description you've got a, a, a very brief little synapse of, of your, the, whatever the content is, the first half of a sentence. 
and then it's got like a read more, or read this, or click here, or whatever. You just click on the picture and it goes right to your thing, right? The bad part about that, though, is, is does anybody notice what's the biggest difference between this one and, and all of the other ones that we've talked about? Yeah, it cuts the widgets out. It doesn't necessarily cut them out totally, but it cuts them off the sides. You might have an option for a widget on the bottom. Now that's a little bit tricky too because what if you are pay, being paid for advertising? You know, the, the advertisers want, they want to be seen as soon as your page opens, right? Uh, that's just more about the commercial side of things. But what if your, what if your website is, has so much content and that it takes forever to get to the bottom of the page? where they can finally see your widget and your contact information and stuff like that. You want to make it as easy as possible for people to find you. If that's what your aim is, is to have collaboration between you and your readers, or you and marketers, or you and advertisers, etc. You want to make that crazy easy. You can, you can bypass things like that by putting a contact link, obviously, but if you're, if you're wanting to emphasize that, you know, putting it in a widget is going to be a little bit difficult. Yeah. To the about page from here, we you get a sidebar. I know, I don't know one of the things that I've worked with the the gallery page or the portfolio page and the actual layout of it, it doesn't have a sidebar, but then you can activate them and it'll show up on your other pages. Yeah. Um, like there, there might be a lot of settings where you could still basically still have room for, for all of your sidebars. <coughs> Yeah, the, yeah, and that's that's a good point to note as well because what we're looking at on this is what we're looking at on this. I think there was four, one, two, three. There's four columns on this. You can also select the three or two columns and have a, a, a one post wide or two post wide widget. And some of them do have that option. A lot of them these days are planning it and doing that. Uh, you know, so that's a good point as well. Don't, I don't really know about this one, but uh, this one's a paid one, so I'm willing to bet that they want to, they'll, they'll want to get it. People, at least if the option's there, people will pay and either use it or not, but they'll have that option. All right, what else can I say about appearance? So I could just, in terms of commenting and using themes, like my favorite, discovery was that everybody who's built a theme that pretty much has written something about how to use it and how to configure it and you can google that and figure out how to configure it for instance i had applied a theme and i couldn't it didn't look the way it did in the demo or you know in the in the uh, thumbnail in the themes gallery so i couldn't figure out what i was doing wrong and it just takes some time to do the research on how that theme works and how to set it up it can look three, four different ways depending on how you have your content set, um, whether you have header images or um, or if you've got it set so that your home page is your is the default post page or if it's pointed to something else. And there's all kinds of tricks, and they'll go through that on the, the you know go to the website or to the page that describes that theme, and then tell you like step by step yeah. how to make it look the way you want. Yeah, and, and they, they no longer have the, the help option over here, but there are other options for help. I'll hear it moved it up here. So WordPress has a help option up here, and you can search. There's, uh, should we have a place to just, uh, well, let's, let's talk about what, what Mr. Kalisha was just saying. Support, I think it's called support.wordpress. No, here it is. Um, Forums.wordpress. Now, just like she was saying, there's, there's topics as, as expected. The problems that you have or will have, someone else is having. And that person is likely asked that question to the WordPress community. And people on their own on their own volition, on their own initiative, respond. So most of the time you're not going to be getting information directly from a programmer or, or a code writer or whatever, but it's somebody who's had that problem and they've fixed it and they've, they're going to tell you how. And they're also going to tell you in very kind of basic language. 
Now, there's a, there's a, there's a caveat to that. There's a, an exception to that rule, rather. And that is that if you have purchased a website template from, from WordPress, that designer has a whole FAQ section. An entire, like, this from the last version, this is what we have. The, update, the updates are, are right here. You can click here and get all the updates. If you have a problem with your favicon, if you have a problem with this widget or that widget, you know, this plugin doesn't work real well. They'll go ahead and find all that stuff for you and put it in their FAQ section if you purchase it. Sometimes they'll end up here. But this is basically what she was talking about and when you go in. I love the new 2015 uh, theme, but when I go and try to remove the featured image in a single post, and the main page, the CSS I'm using shifts the title, etc., etc. Uh, the the response she oh she she put her website there and said uh, the blog I need this information for is right here. All right, she 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 actually took a, a copy of the little piece of code that she has a problem with and she put it down here as well. Now. <clears throat> Whoever responded came over here and said, oh, well, it sounds like this is the problem, and this is how to fix it. The, the following removes the featured images from the post. So all she has to do is see where it says post thumbnail image. You're going to see, see that it says post dot, 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 et cetera. She's going to simply take this, I'm sorry, take this, and post it instead of this in, in between these brackets, or whatever the directions are, OK? So that's an, 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 a literal and exact, precise thing that someone can do to fix whatever problem they have. All right, you find those kind of fixes here. It's a giant time consumer. If you've got one little problem that's hampering you up, my best advice is to choose your battles. Do you know what I mean? If it's something that looks a little bit pink and that it's, you can tell it's gonna take more than like an hour to fix it, put it on the back burner, put it on a list somewhere, and work on some more important stuff. If it becomes something that even after you've gotten back to it on the list and you still can't fix it, get another template, right? Don't spend too much time doing that when what you really want to focus on are things like content, interaction, growing your network, etc. right? That's what the objectives portion of the project uh, was, you know, when, when, I, when I had you guys sit down and write your objectives out, right? And confirmed. If we come down a little bit, it says, thanks, it worked. There you go. So now, if I ever had that problem, not only do I know how to fix it, but I don't have to do the guesswork on whether or not it actually worked. It does actually work. All right, so that was good. All right, so let's go through the dashboard. You know what I love about WordPress? Probably the single most important thing that WordPress does that you can't, you couldn't pay enough money in Sterling for is the analytics. They give you everything in the analytics. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'll know that by 11.18 today, 48 people went by and checked out whatever. So if I check, if I click on this, I'll know, I'll, I'll, on that actual bar itself, it comes right over here. It says, all right, this is what people read. 33 went uh, to check out this uh, video computer. I put some specs on there for video editing. Right, just one day, I knew I had a problem of of editing the video that I did abroad, you know, like while traveling. What software is not so heavy that it drags down the processing of, of a laptop, but is still efficient enough to, you know, do your thing? And so that's I made a blog about that, and that's clearly a very popular one. All right, uh, several people just showed up on the homepage. Uh, two people went to check out the the review I did on the Nikon D4. Uh, and obviously, so today, photography is very important, right? Top 10 tips for Singapore photography, right? So people are really interested in that stuff. If I go to yesterday, and I can tell what people are reading, that would be 40 people went to the computer thing. So obviously that's a one that's effective. Maybe I'll advertise that one. Maybe I'll put that post on Facebook. Maybe I'll tweet a link to that post, right? And just keep, keep the traffic coming on. Now, it goes further though, it goes much deeper in that I can click on this, okay, that's not what I, I can find out that uh, the actual refers are listed here. Now, where are people coming from? All right, 
So 35 out of 39, just Google probably specs for video editing software or computer hardware, right? So they probably just Googled it, my link came up, and the more that my link comes up when it's searched, the more it'll come up in the future as well. So mine may have started out on the second page, uh, you know, af after I get 35 hits every day for a couple weeks, then it'll move up to the first page, then it'll move up to the fifth link, and then it'll be up right up at the top as soon as Google has any hits on that search at all, right? That's how you, that's how you bring your blog up, up to the front of Google's search tools. Anybody's search tools, really, because they all kind of work with similar algorithms. All right. What I really wanted to say was, what I really wanted to see, and it, again, they changed it since the last time I looked at it, but it, it, it generally lists stuff right here, uh, like how people are getting there, Top one for the last seven days has been Twitter. We go beyond that. Fair I've got Google. So so people are coming from my website at KyleDonald.com and they're getting sent over to the blog. So they're either clicking links or they're searching my name after that and they're leaving that page and coming directly to the blog or whatever. Uh, third in line would be Facebook, fourth in line would be startpage.com, whatever the heck that is. Uh, and then obviously translate.google.com, uh, Google Plus Twitter. So you'll have a, a, a list of rank, you know, in, in, in numbers, in most importance. And WordPress is telling you, if you're going to have more success on your blog, you're gonna, you're gonna focus on what, what is first, second, and third, and quite literally in that order, right? If Facebook is your most effective use of reference, Hammer it down, you know, walk onto it. Uh, and the same, the same goes true for all the other ones. It looks like most people are doing search engine stuff. So what can you do to make your website or blog more effective for search engines? Better tags. Better tags, SEO. What does SEO stand for? It stands for Search Engine Optimization. SEO, learn it, know it, live it. Right? If you're going to have anything to do with web design or web, and anything on the web at all, you're going to want to know those three little letters. Very key in, in creating your readership, your viewership, your listeners, whatever you're doing. All right. So, what would I do if um, they're coming from one specific website? It's like kyleandall.com. What would I do there to increase traffic? I actually have control over KyleDonald.com, right? So I'm gonna want to go over to KyleDonald.com and put more links. I'm gonna want to go in through uh, each one of my galleries and make sure that there's a link coming from there, or make sure that there's like, oh, you like this picture or you like this gallery? Read the blog from the Philippines in 2010, right here. Right? I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that I do that because obviously, if it comes up second or third on the list, that's gonna be an important. One. If you're coming from Facebook, maybe you know Facebook actually right now offers like I think you can pay ten bucks and have your link, whatever that link is, sent out to like millions of people for like ten bucks. You can't, you, you know, like you, you can't do that kind of thing on your own. You can't access that kind of a wide open uh, demographic. All right, uh, that is a little bit about the analytics, a little bit about the themes. What else? What other questions do we have? All right, let's go down uh, link by link. Everybody knows what the dashboard is. It's the, this is the thing we're looking at right now, right? So if I go to dashboard, it's WP Admin, right? All I have to do is click Admin and you'll go to the dashboard. All that stuff is here. Now, the dashboard is actually, it's not just about the links over here on the left, it's also about what's in here. All right, at a glance section is really cool because it tells you, you know, I've got this many posts, I've got this many comments, I've got these many comments waiting, you know, this is stuff that it's reminding me that, I, that I've, I've got stuff to do here. It also allows you to like quickly post something. 
like, this is what's on my mind today. And you can quite literally post something right here. Uh, it gives you activity and then your analytics, etc. All right? So, let's move down to, okay, so store won't be necessary unless you're actually selling something and uh, I don't think anybody here is, at least at this point. All right, so let's talk about posts versus pages. It seems pretty obvious, but I want to ask the question anyway. What's the difference between a post and a page? Yes and no, but that's that's actually that that, that moves into a good uh, <coughs> moves into a good discussion point. She said you can put many posts on one page, so that's that's true, and it's not. If you you can set your WordPress, uh, the entire site, to, to be, I think it might be theme options, but you can set it to be either static or dynamic in that, okay, so maybe this is it here. If you want your posts to appear on the landing page, if I, if I put a polygon.wordpress.com and I want all my posts on this page, then that's exactly what will happen. I think that's a static option. That means every all the posts that I ever post to bring come right here and sit here. That's their home. But I might not want that on the about section, right? The about page is, you know, I think I put up an interview that I did with a magazine over here or something. And, you know, throughout this section, there's just all kinds of little links that I have throughout the blog just to send people around as they're reading. And so, I, but I don't want the posts there, that's the point. All right. uh, on the contact page as well. Certainly there's uh, you know, kind of like a, a list of things that you want people to know about you, but what you don't want is other kinds of stuff on there. All right. So I want it all here. Now, if I had a different page, say most popular posts, and, and you know, that's probably, a, there's probably a widget for that, but let's just say that I want a page with just my the last five years, this top 10, like, you know, the collection of the best posts, I can also have those listed there. And that's an option for the dynamic one, all right? But the main difference between pages and posts are that posts themselves can be, I guess I just popped out of it. You can add pages and posts, but if you go to your pages, you'll only have, uh, obviously, a fewer number of pages. Um, the, the easiest way to explain the difference is that a page is going to be your static content that's a permanent page. You may change it a bit, you know, occasionally, but it's meant to be um, a static part of your website. Like it, it's content that stays the same and it stays in the same place, whereas the posts are the sort of your timeline. The stuff that you're adding to it all the time, the stuff that's going to aggregate, and you always see the newest thing first. So you can look at a post either individually uh, or on a list, or you can search for them. You can do all kinds of things, but the pages are sort of the the backbone of your website that are the static content. And just like Lisa was saying, that there's 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 many different ways to find your posts, right? You can you can click on the categories over here. Uh, if you want all just the journals, if, if you want to just see the updates that I've done or the videos that I've done, so anything with video content, I'll put a tag in there. And like she said, you can you can find the posts in different ways. But if you want a page, it's the it's the stuff that stays in one place. It's the stuff that doesn't necessarily build. You know, the about tech, the about page is never going to get any bigger. It's also never going to have any posts on it. All right. Another way to think of it is. Um, well, and, and they can essentially they can have different templates too. Like your pages when you have one template that, that has them all looking, um, you know, the static content. You have a main section and you have this sidebar and that sidebar, which is widgets. Whereas your your posts might have, you know, different a different layout um, for the individual posts because it will look different for the featured image and whatever ads need to be there. Um, they don't necessarily have to have different templates, but they often do. So let's go to. 
So if this is Travel Geek Mag magazine, all right, this is this is the main landing page. It's not necessarily a page per se. Like you can't, there's no link to click to get here, but it's the landing place that you arrive when you show up. It's the closest thing that I would describe to a post rather than a page because if I want to click an old edition, say, it would just it would be it would load different content. But here I have two columns here, one section here, there's a divider here, there's obviously some messed up code right there that I need to fix. And then down here I've got three articles. If you click either one of any of these, and it's it's divided into three columns. Alright? So what you got when you clicked on that link? Now you're looking at an archive page that has a template specific to archive the posts. Right. Yep, each one of these links will go directly to a post. And the posts look different in that. You know, I can I can turn these into columns just like on the original uh, option, but you know, I mean, there's no point in doing that because I don't have several items of content. There's only one. There's I need I need but one item here, and that you know that's it links to what's called a post. Right? So and the pages are differ in in the way that Alicia was saying in that uh, if I want, I mean I can technically edit them the same way. Uh, you know, constructing the different uh, columns, the different segments, and things like that. But so you want to go to the podcasts that I have. All of them are just kind of listed. The posts are going to be individual ones. And that's my All right. So you can also you can control how people uh, react or respond. If you click on the comment section, you can say you want to approve them or dis or unapprove them or or put them in line to like wait behind. Uh, something. Let's let's go to feedback. I'll, I'll talk about it. And where are the shipping options for feedback? You know where I would find how to set the approve section. Thank you. 
slides, for instance, oh, this is an image post versus this is a, a video post versus a, a gallery cat post. Via categories? No. Um, but when you're actually creating a post, there's a selection box where you choose what, what format it is. And I mean, I assume that a really well-built out scene would have a different sort of post template for each of those formats. Mm -hmm. But I can't figure out any difference. I know, actually. I mean, All I've seen is that it, it puts a different icon on the post itself next to your author name. But uh, well, maybe that's, maybe that's a way of pseudo-tagging them or pseudo-categorizing them. I really don't know. Yeah, the only, the only thing I've been able to figure so far is that it makes it sort of easy to create different different types of post templates that would line up with those. But none of the themes I've seen actually have different post templates at all. As a result? Yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't purchased any themes, so maybe that's the difference. Well, on your media, media, when, when, when looking at it in WordPress terms, media simply means stuff that isn't text, right? So photos, videos, podcasts, uh, any kind of multimedia, GIFs, uh, favicons, uh, profile pictures, uh, little graphics like this, anything that isn't text. So when uploading, it's asking you what's the, what's the, what's the small, medium, and large size. They also, when you're, when you're actually uploading a picture, you can, it, it gives you the option for full size. It doesn't mean it will it'll display it in full size. It means it will display it in the largest possible size per the resolution of the screen it's being viewed on. Uh, background color you can choose, all that stuff is here. Oh, and they've got a video player. I don't have the option here because you have to have, and WordPress has their own video player too, so you don't have to use uh, YouTube or Vimeo or anything like that and post code. You can upload your videos uh, to their their servers and play them on their own stuff. All right, so um, you can kind of tool around in here with all of the different settings and stuff. If you have settings, I wonder if settings if the settings option is available anywhere. It probably is. Some of the some of the stuff in in the settings option is available for the free accounts. A lot of this is in the free accounts. Um, sharing in particular. I think it's a really important point because it gives you the option to keep your whole entire site private until you're done messing with it. And even then you can share it just with specific people. Um, yeah, the way there's there's several ways to do that. There's the way that Alicia was just talking about and they're they're I've clearly gone and connected lots of different things. I totally forgot that. <laughs> Yeah, there's, uh, there's a way, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that Facebook, LinkedIn, and all the other social media platforms have, have gotten together with WordPress on one level or another and said, hey, we, we, we should be able to share uh, intuitively or internally somehow to be able to choose those sorts of, sorts of things. I am not very really versed at that. I clearly attempted to do so at some point, connected by Pinterest and Tumblr, but Maybe I tried them and they didn't work for what I wanted to do or something. But you guys can tool around with that. And this is this is the general layout. Most, if not all, templates are going to have the option to do these. And if they don't, they probably have widgets or I'm oh, sorry, uh, plugins out there that are made directly for them. All right, and we just got a few minutes left. So what else? The other way, the other way to share is through users. Now, if you have a paid account, you can invite users and give them a specific, like you guys, Chase and Doug and Manish, you guys are gonna want to focus on this section here. Once you get your site up and running, you're gonna put the email address of the person that you need in there, and you're gonna put them at, you're gonna, first of all, whoever sets up the account is gonna be the admin. So. You can have an additional admin. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, assume that everybody on the staff is going to be admin, 
But let's say a year down the road this thing's still going strong and you guys need some contributors, authors, uh, somebody who you trust with access to editing posts and pages, you can give them access here. To find out about all that stuff, you just click here. All right, all the way down to follower. You can actually invite people to uh, get your RSS feed. And RSS feed is a whole different thing. It's, it's either interactive or you can have it up, 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 sort of set up through email and things like that. But that's where you do all that. You just put their stuff in there. You can put a personalized thing with an invitation and put send it here. You're good. All right. I think that's a good place to end. I'm really sorry I didn't have the, the, the pyro working today to make this exciting. And some fireworks going on while I was talking, but uh, <laughs> it's it's talking about computers. You know what I mean? It's not the most exciting stuff in the world, but it is necessary, unfortunately. It's necessary evil for those of you who are going to be involved in it. So, if you have any questions, let me know.